Hey, this is an exciting day for Ebor, but specifically for the East Ebor neighborhood. And we are all here today, uh, really, because Fran Constantino is, uh, has made this day come true. This has been something that she has uh, fought long and hard to get the recognition of East Tampa. Many of you may remember the days that this was really, this particular area was called East of 22nd, was the reference. And she fought hard to make this uh, a neighborhood, uh, East Ebor, and also to get the recognition and the growth that is deserved down in this area. Fran and I just had a conversation a couple of seconds ago and I said, well, you need to hold on to your seat now because the changes to this particular area, the growth is really going to come fast and furious. So this is a very exciting day. Um, Fran, we were reminiscing about uh, some of our meetings years back and she talked about an award that she won, the David West Award. And many of you may not have remembered him, but he was an incredible community activist and community leader uh, who, who passed away at a young age. And we had a, an award that really still to this day is the most prestigious community award that you can receive. And Fran has received that award in the past. And she said that all I had on my remarks up there was that Fran is happy. And that's all that matters. As long as Fran is happy, everything is going well in East Ebor. So we're very excited to be here. I'm excited to be here with city council members. Uh, we have Joe Citro, the council chair. We have Orlando Goods, who this is his particular area of responsibility. We have Guido Maniscalco, and we have Lynn Hurtak here. So everybody, this was a, a collaborative effort between uh, the Ebor CRA, the YCDC, the city of Tampa, just a number of individuals that came together to make sure that this day happened and that we have this monument that everyone that drives along 7th Avenue will be able to see every single day as East Ebor continues to grow. So I want to say a uh, special uh, thanks to, I think Courtney had a lot uh, to do with this as well. So I thank you for the part that you played and everybody else having a hand in this. Henry told me that he had worked on this for seven years. So he's literally come out of retirement out here to see this ribbon cutting today. So that is, uh, that's a wonderful thing as well. So I'm gonna bring up Joe Citro for a few words and then the woman of the hour, Fran's gonna come up and let us know why we're here today. Joe? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good afternoon, everyone. And this is a Ebor City Chamber of Commerce day that we have, a beautiful day, and I welcome all of you to come out here. This has been the effort of Miss Fran Constantino, and this day after 10 years has finally arrived. And for those of you who live in Ebor City or East Ebor City know that when Fran Constantino is happy, everyone is happy. There are a few people that I'd like to thank, and that's the contract administration for the city of Tampa for help making this possible. I'd also, yes, a round of applause. And the gentleman back there that is hiding, Mr. Mark Levy of the Tampa Contracting, thank you very much for helping this happen. The YCDC, excuse me, the Ebor City CAC had a lot to do with this under the direction of Fran Constantino, but I'd like to thank all the board members, all of the past board members of which I was one. Fran, your day has finally come true. Why don't you come up and tell us about this great event. Fran Constantino. Thank you everyone for coming. I'm Fran Costantino and I led the East E4 Historic and Civic Association Incorporated for 15 years and this project started like 20 years ago. Uh, I almost feel like the mayor actually. Uh, I used to get all the calls for everything that was happening in East Ebor 
and I felt like the mayor of East Tibor. I think all I need is a little dog named Dessa there you and go. a driver, and then, <laughs> and then I got it made. But I do want to thank everybody from the bottom of my heart. This has been a long, long, long time coming. I want to give thanks to the Ybor City Development staff, the board, especially the Planning and Infrastructure Committee, the Barrio Latino Commission, all the city departments have worked on it. If there was any issue with stormwater or anything that could go wrong, when it says it takes a village to accomplish what we have done in these four blocks, it takes a village. Uh, I want to thank Kim Hedlund and acknowledge her. Uh, when we decided that we wanted a monument, she was the first one that volunteered her architectural services for the design. She's with Wilder Architects, and we can thank her for the design of this. Uh, I asked, should I say just a few words or give you the long story of how we got here? And I was advised that since you're all here, give you the long story. So it all started, my grandparents came from Sicily in 1906, and they were pioneers of Ybor City. And they settled on the east side with the office on 4th Avenue, was the monument business, and my nana's house on 5th Avenue. So in the old days, as you became affluent, you sort of like wanted to move out of the neighborhood, which was sad. So the neighborhood deteriorated, investors came in, they didn't invest in the properties, and it became blighted. So there was administrations, which I won't name, did not have the foresight to board up these historic houses that cigar factories actually lived and worked in. So they did controlled burns and they bulldozed all these historic houses, mostly east of 22nd Street. So I came back in 1999 and called the sheriff. Well, they don't come into the city. Called the police, called the post office. There was nothing. The comprehensive plan for the city east of 22nd Street was to be commercial and industrial. And I go, well, I'm here. And the police would come and say, Fran, it's getting dark. I think you should leave. I said, no, we were here before them. I think you ought to make all of them leave. So little by little, I said, well, what can I do to help? So I asked what neighborhood organization was available, and there was one on the west side. So the Junta girls, the Greco sisters, and myself joined the neighborhood association on the west side. Well, their problems that they had then, they still have today. And it's parking and clubs and noise and the same issues they still have. Well, I told them, I said, that's all well and good, but that doesn't help us on the east side who really have problems with drugs and prostitution. So in order to form an organization, you have to really get their permission from the mayor's office to let go of their territory. Well, by that time, after attending years for too many meet for two years of meetings, they were more than happy to tell me, yeah, get everything east of 22nd and go, you can have that. So we formed a civic or organization and uh, incorporated formed a crime watch and that didn't make me happy. I thought, you know, we're still nowhere. So I started by myself going to Historic Preservation, the Barrio Latino Commission, and two hearings at City Hall where we finally, after three years, extended the historic local boundaries from 22nd to 26th Street. And they thought that would be enough. So then the first year, we pleaded with CRA 1 to let us share the funds. So we did get palm trees and receptacles and benches on the first block from 22nd to 23rd. Well, that still wasn't enough. So I kept on with the board and I said, you know, we really need to acknowledge our historic local district. And so little by little, with all the meetings, I got laughs, I got eye rolls. And I think at every board meeting, if I raised my hand, they would go, I know, Fran, east of 22nd Street, we know already. But we hung in there and with the help of the board and everybody, I mean, the girls at the YCDC, Courtney who hung in there to get the funding, Brenda who's there for anything we want. Uh, my real trooper on this project was Corrine. I have to bring out Corrine Leinenbrink's name because as I pushed and pushed and pushed, that girl never pushed back. When we had issues with the stormwater and transportation and whatever, I mean, she was on it. She stayed on this project with me for the whole 10 years. So I'll make it short. I know it's hot. I just want to thank everybody. Today is our day to appreciate historic East Ybor, and I am one happy tapping native. Thank you.
Mayor's available to talk storm in a couple minutes. All right. All right. Just going to talk a little bit about our preparations for Hurricane Nicole. Uh, we are prepared. As you know, uh, Nicole was named a tropical storm not too long ago, predicted to hit uh, the east coast of Florida. We should start to feel the effects tomorrow and Thursday, looking anywhere from two to four, possibly five inches of rain. The one thing we know about the storm predictions is the unpredictability of those. We saw that with Ian. And so we prepare for the worst while we hope for the best. We have uh, done the usual. We've drained our stormwater drains. Uh, we've cleaned everything out. We have uh, prepared for any potential flooding. We have uh, all of our city departments are on alert. We filled all of our generators. We have done everything that we can to prepare for the worst and we are ready as a city. As far as our community, we will keep everyone informed. We handed out 100,000 sandbags for Hurricane Ian, so the majority, we don't anticipate that anyone will need them, but if they do, they should have those sandbags already at their homes. But uh, we are here for our community, again, to prepare uh, as much as we can, and that involves personal responsibility on the part of our residents. But as a city, we are prepared for whatever Nicole may bring our way. We, we don't anticipate there'll be a need for additional sandbags. Uh, right now, the tide shouldn't be an issue for us, nor should the amount of rain that we get. If we get anywhere from two to five inches of rain, we can handle that, our drainage can handle that. Not to say there won't be minor flooding in some areas, but again, we'll keep everyone informed minute by minute as the storm moves because they are unpredictable. Right, we always say hide from the wind, run from the water, but again, we don't anticipate any large-scale flooding, but we will keep everyone apprised as the storm moves along because anything could happen. 
as it comes across land, right. usually lose some of that momentum, and we won't have to worry about a storm surge coming in because it's moving from the east to the west. Yes, we don't anticipate that anyone's going to need sandbags, so we're not setting up that function right now. Um, you know, if something changes, uh, we could set that up at the last minute, but there's nothing to indicate that this is going to be a large scale flooding incident. And just the, you know, the regular reminders don't ever drive through water that you can't see what's there, don't wander into that water. Be mindful of down limbs, down uh, electrical lines if we do get high winds. The predicted winds now are between 50, 60 miles an hour, mostly in North Tampa. So we don't anticipate we'll get to the hurricane force winds. Again, pay attention to the news. Uh, sign up for Alert Tampa and we will keep everyone informed both in English and in Spanish. All right. Thank you, guys. Hey, Kim.